Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, I've got an interesting project for you this time. Now, if you've watched any of my videos in the past couple of videos, you know that I am temporarily set up here with a few tools in the old shop while I'm getting the new shop redone. Well, in the past couple of videos, I've been making some projects and I've been mentioning that I really need to make an outfeed table. And I've done just that. My table happens to be a fold-away table with a ducktail sliding leg. So when set up and locked into place, I'm ready to go. This table is supported by a single leg that works like a big sliding dovetail. When collapsed and locked into position, it allows the table to fold down with ease. as well as set up. I liked this sliding dovetail leg assembly so much that I'm actually going to use it on some fold down work surfaces that I'm building in the new shop. Getting a better look at the leg assembly underneath, it works like a big sliding dovetail. There's a couple of barrel bolts that hold it in the open position, as well as the closed position. And there's another barrel bolt here that locks it away so the table can fall down with no problem. This outfeed table is going to be a great addition to my table saw and if you stick around I'll show you how I made it. So if you remember the week before last when I made the filing cabinet for my grandfather one of the things I had mentioned is that I may end up building an outfeed table for the table saw and I, it's exactly what I want to do. Now I'm a big fan of checking out you know the latest and greatest in magazines and seeing what's out there you know as far as what people are doing uh, for different designs of your work surfaces or outfeed tables and I happened to find an outfeed table back in a 2009 issue of Woodworkers Journal magazine that I really liked and that's exactly the one that I'm going to build for this table saw. Now the original plan of that outfeed table is kind of designed for a cabinet style table saw with the Biesmeier uh, fence system. This is a little bit different because this particular fence hooks on this back angle iron as well as the front track and that's what it travels on. On the bottom of the fence there is a wheel here and a little catch that catches on the angle iron up here and for the design of the table saw the angle iron was actually flipped upside down to where this lip was at the bottom so what I have to do is adapt this design to my saw and add one of those angle irons now some of the things that I'm going to need for this outfit table I've kind of got laid out right here uh, I got some contact cement and uh, some rollers to apply the contact cement to the MDF. I've got some MDF here that I've already kind of cut down roughly. Uh, and I've got some laminate. Now the laminate's in the other building. I still got to break it down to smaller sizes. But we'll be applying that laminate to both sides of this fence. Um, also, I've got you know a couple of things as, as the plans call for. Some barrel bolts. Uh, miscellaneous hardware and this is a two inch uh, by eighth inch angle iron and this is what I'm going to adapt to my system because the table support um, sits down into this area here and what I have to do on my table saw here is I have to mount this angle iron on the back side uh, right up underneath this existing angle iron uh, because I still need my fence to be able to ride across here and everything but I also need a place to mount this new outfit table so we're gonna go ahead and get these lined up I'm gonna make some hole marks to use the existing holes that are mounting this angle iron on and we're just gonna mount right to it uh, you'll see later in the video that where this fence rides it uh, will interfere with the mounting uh, plate 
that's what they call it in the plan, the mounting plate that the table pivots on and everything. Um, so we're going to have to wrap it out the back of that so the fence can still move freely and I still have full operation of it and everything. So let's get started with the angle iron by lining up the holes, making the marks, and getting over to the drill press and getting those drilled so I can get this mounted. So now that I have the angle iron attached to the saw, I had to take out all of my bolts. So what I need to do first and foremost is make sure that my wings of my table saw and my angle iron that my fence rides in is back to a true setting uh, and everything is trued up. And then from there, I can go ahead and start working on the outfeed table and building the mounting plate that gets mounted to this angle bracket. Uh, and then we can go ahead and start cutting some parts down, getting them pre-assembled and everything so we can get this thing rolling. All right, now that the angle iron is attached to the saw and the saw is trued back up, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the main body of the outfeed table. It requires me to cut down two sheets of three-quarter MDF. Now they're, the, the two sheets are going to be glued together, and then they're going to, to be laminated with uh, Formica on the top and bottom. Now the top sheet of MDF, is going to be cut to a width of 22 and 3 quarters. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. Alright, now the bottom sheet of MDF gets ripped down to a width of 19 and 3 quarters. I've already got my fence set up, so we'll go ahead and rip that sheet. Alright, both of the sheets were ripped down to 42 and a half inches in length. And as I said, this bottom piece here is 19 and 3 quarters. The top piece is 22 and 3 quarters. I got them flipped upside down now because I'm getting ready to glue them together. Now to help me glue these together to make sure that I have a good lamination and good clamping pressure all the way across, I made some calls uh, to help me with the clamping. What I've done is I've taken a couple of boards and these are about 22 and 3 quarters the same length as my clamping area and from the center to the end I've taken about two or three degrees off each one uh, off each side and that way as I clamp these down it'll spread that clamping pressure all the way across from the center out and to because I have such a big clamping area I went ahead and drew a line where this stops. I don't want really glue onto this outside edge just yet. About three inches of that outside edge gets a different tart, and we'll get into that later. But set this aside. What I've done to help me spread this glue so the glue doesn't start setting up a little bit is I have an old, um, from my pool saw, an old blade from it. And I'll just use the teeth, and it'll help me kind of spread and thin out that glue and everything across and it's just a little shop tip that you know you might be able to use all right let's get this thing glued up and uh get ready to start working on some other parts
All right, I got this on. Now, MDF is kind of real slippery, so as you clamp, it may want to move around, and I don't want it to move, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some headless pins out of my pin miller, make sure that I have everything where I want it, <clears throat> nice and lined up, and I'm going to put a little pin in each corner. Just kind of hold it still while I clamp it down. And that'll keep it from moving. And so I can get my clamps uh, underneath it and everything. I'm going to use a couple of the cutoffs uh, from the two sheets that I just ripped off. They're the same height. 42 inches I had to cut off, so I'm going to use them to kind of raise it up a little bit. There we go. And as you can see, how this call is touching here in the center but not here on the out edge as I clamp it down it'll pull it down and it'll spread that clamping pressure all the way across all four of these you see how nicely it brings it all the way across you know you got nice even clamping pressure that way so while the MDF is gluing up, I'm going to go ahead and get my Formica cut down. Uh, I, this is a 4x8 sheet and you know, it's, Formica's got a little bit of a cost to it. Down here it's you know $42 a sheet. This one happened to be damaged in the corner, uh, which I won't need, but uh, I was able to get it at a discounted price. Um, but this will go on to the top and the bottom of the MDF glue up that I'm doing over next door and uh, it'll really keep everything nice and rigid and won't allow over time that MDF to flex one way or the other. So what I can do is I can get both my 22 and 3 quarter and my 19 and 3 quarter out of uh, one length of sheeting this way. So I'm going to come down, since my pieces are 42 and a half inches long, I want a little bit of overhang and I'll trim them up with a, uh, a trim router uh, when everything's all said and done, but I want to measure a little bit long and cut that. So I'm going to take this at uh, just about 43 inches. So now I just put a straight edge across it and I'm going to go ahead and just score it with a razor knife and just go ahead and cut it and break it that way versus trying to saw it with a saw and everything. I do not want this Formica to chip or crack or break <laughs> because it is it does have a cost to it I've got a sheet of MDF up underneath it And from there, I can go ahead and cut out my two parts. For my 22 and 3 quarter inch piece, I'm going to go around 23 and a quarter. That way I have a little bit of overhang all the way around and I can flush it up with a trim router. And again, just as I did before, I'm going to score it and then snap it on the line.
scares you when it pops like that. You think it's going to break, but it doesn't. Alright, so that's one piece. Now I need to go ahead and mark and cut out my 19 and 3 quarter, and I'm going to make that one about 20 and a quarter. Alright guys, if none of you have ever worked with Formica or contact cement, uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. What you want to do is get yourself either a sprinter, you know, like a putty knife. Uh, a roller works very well when you have large surfaces like this. And get yourself some contact cement. Now, on the MDF, I'm going to be applying this sheet of Formica. And what I want to do is I want to roll out that contact cement nice even layer all the way across my substrate here on both surfaces. I want to do it on the back side of the Formica as well. Once we do that, you're going to let both of them sit for about 15 to 20 minutes or until they get tacky. Uh, let them dry a little bit. Once they get tacky, then you know you're about ready. And we're going to show, I'm going to show you the whole process here in just a second. Then what you're going to need, after you get everything rolled on, you're going to need yourself some thin strips. Now these are very helpful because if you put those two surfaces together, the Formica and the MDF, when that contact cement touches, it's an instant bump. So these little thin strips here, I will be able to lay across my substrate, my MDF. Then, I can take my Formica, lay it on top, get everything lined up exactly where I want it. Once I have it where I want it, and I'm fine with that, then I can slowly pull out one strip at a time and bonding it as I go. From there, once everything's on, then you're going to want to get yourself a J roller of some sort. You know, a, a J roller, some type of roller or something, or, or, or some kind of, even, even a long board or, uh, that might be rounded over, something that you can apply even pressure from the center out. And you want to start in the center and you want to roll it out and you need some good pressure, some good contact to really get that to uh, adhere and bond you know, solidly. So let's go ahead now that I kind of walked you through the process, let's actually do it.
now that that is done and both surfaces are coated, we're going to give it about 15 or 20 minutes to dry until both surfaces are tacky and it's starting to dry. And then we'll go ahead and apply the two. Now you don't want to rush this part. This part is really critical. You want a strong bond between your substrate and your laminate. And you want to take your time when doing this particular step. So we'll give it some time to dry. We'll come back and check, you know, for it to get tacky. Once it is, we'll go ahead and get it rolled on and applied to the MBF. So now with the laminate applied to the bottom side of the MDF, I've got a nice good bond and everything. Um, we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the other side. Now it's going to take about 72 hours uh, for it to really get up to its maximum st bonding strength and everything. But in the meantime, it's already got a nice solid bond. I can go ahead and flip it over and work on the other side without any worries. All right, well, the Formica is on and everything is perfect. I had great adhesion and it turned out well. As you know, I made it a little bit oversized than the substrate, than the, you know, the MDF. So now I need to go ahead and take my palm router with a laminate trim bit or flush trim bit and uh, clean up the edges and bring them flush to the table. On two of these parts, these are the pivot brackets for the leg, and these get mounted into another board. But first, I need to mark an inch and a half radius and cut them out on both of them. Once my radius is marked out, I can go ahead and cut it off and clean it up. It's times like these I wish I had a bandsaw, but last year mine broke down and I haven't gotten a replacement. I could very easily make these radius cuts with the bandsaw and then clean them up with the sander. But since I don't, I could also make them with a scroll saw. Uh, but my scroll saw is packed away and I don't feel like digging it out. So I'm just going to use a jigsaw and I'm going to cut as close as I can to the radius uh, and then I'll clean it up with the sander. I went ahead and double sided tape both of them brackets together so I can make the one cut, cut them both and then I can clean them up with the sander and they'll be exactly the same. Alright, these pivot brackets that I just cut the inch and a half radius in, they both get a 5 16 inch hole drilled right in the center. 
Now I've still got them double sided taped together and also the center is not from the bottom to the top because these are going to be set into a quarter inch dado on another piece of this project. So I went ahead and marked a line at a quarter inch and then from that line to the top is three inches and the width of this is three inches. So my center point in both directions is an inch and a half. From there I went ahead and marked it and now I'm going to drill it. Okay, we're back over here at the tabletop, and if you remember, the top of this tabletop was cut at 22 and 3 quarter inches, and the bottom of the table was cut at 19 and 3 quarter inches. That left a 3 inch space here, which is going to take this 3 inch by 42 and a half inch board, and then those two pivot brackets that I just made are going to be placed on the board like this, and we're going to cut some dados into this board a quarter inch deep and mount these. What we need to do first is on this board here I need to find the center and then from the center out these two brackets are going to be mounted at ten and three quarter inches from each other. Okay over here at the table saw I've got my blade height set to about a quarter of an inch I've got my marks laid out for the two dados that I need to cut in this board. I'm going to go ahead and make those cuts and I'm going to sneak up on the cuts and I'm going to be testing my fit once I get close to my marks. I'll check my fit because I really want this to be a nice snug fit. I don't want it too loose or anything like that because this is going to be the main swing bracket for the arm. So go ahead and get these cuts made and we'll see how well we do. And that's exactly the fit that I want to where it's a nice friction fit it's held in by its own weight so now all we have to do is add some glue and put in some screws from the back and then attach this to the table now with these brackets uh, screwed and glued into place I can go ahead in this big rabbit essentially I can add some glue and some screws and go ahead and screw this down in here <laughs> 